Hi guys, Dr. Danessa here with Triangle IBS with another cause of IBS. In the last video, we talked about SIBO, one of my personal favorites, but here's another one that's really gotten a lot more mainstream in the last probably five or eight years, leaky gut syndrome. It's exactly what it sounds like, but I'm going to run through it with you guys anyway. If you imagine your gut, well, first of all, hold on. You are not what you think you are. Your body is a hollow tube, much like these toys that we used to get at the state fair when we were kids. So if you imagine when you play with these tubes, it just keeps turning in over itself over and over again. And you have basically a hollow tube in the center. And then you have all the fluid and sparkles and fish and whatever else. This is what your body is like. And in this case, your mouth is one end and your anus is the other end. And all the fluid and the cells and the bits and pieces that you think are really you are really the equivalent of the water in this little toy. Um, that being said, the gut kind of looks different through that lens. Your gut is actually outside your body. Yeah, wrap your head around that. Wild times. But if you think about like in this case, you know, you could theoretically go all the way through and you're still outside. Your gut is the outside of your body, so it's kind of a big deal. It's like your skin. If you get a cut in your skin or a really bad burn, that could easily become infected, and all the bugs that are floating around in this soup we call planet Earth can get in and invade and possibly kill you. So the gut is equally important. You're eating food and drinking drinks all day long that are caked in viruses and bacteria and fungus and rough stuff. And your gut is there to protect you and keep you, you, from the outside world, all of your bugs and stuff, until you decide what you want to absorb and what you want to get rid of. Um, leaky gut syndrome, then, if you think about the gut as a barrier, you have cells of the immune, uh, cells of the gut, in this case, my fingers, that are really close together, like tightly bound together by proteins. And this is the barrier. So if you imagine there's some bugs and stuff swimming around up here in the ether, this fortress isn't going to let things get by unless it decides it wants to. With leaky gut, one of two things happens or both, usually both. Either one of the cells gets damaged enough that it just, it goes cyanora and now you have this big gaping hole or well, big, relatively speaking. Um, this is not big enough that it would show up on an endoscopy or a colonoscopy or anything, so keep that in mind. But you either get this big gaping hole or the cells start to space apart. And those proteins that used to hold the gut cells together aren't as sticky anymore and they loosen up. So either way, you've got cells that are like this opened up wide and you have gaps in between them and your gut literally becomes leaky and stuff gets through these cracks through to the other side. Well, what's on the other side? You, you are, namely your bloodstream and your immune system. Your immune system mostly hangs out in the gut. That's why everybody in the autoimmune world is talking about leaky gut and, and gut health and SIBO and stuff like that because like 70 or 80% of your immune cells hang out in the gut and they wait for invaders to come in, which is really actually brilliant if you think about it. If you had a castle and you wanted to protect the castle, where would you put the guards? Would you put them right at the edge of the boat waiting for the bad guys to come in? Or would you have them like in a random room somewhere in the middle of the castle stashed away? You wouldn't do that. You would have them right there at the boat waiting for the bad guys to come in. That's exactly the same thing. Most of your immune cells hang out underneath the membrane of the gut and they're just waiting there, chilling. Uh, but then even if you get past the immune system, which a lot of stuff does, some of these bacterial toxins can get through into the bloodstream and they can cause things like joint pain and headaches and muscle pain and fibro and all sorts of stuff. Leaky gut is a really common issue with IBS, either by itself or with other stuff. It's usually not the only thing. If you have leaky gut, you've got other stuff going on. Um, namely, 
with SIBO, which I talked about in another video, with that small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, that will oftentimes trigger leaky gut. And then you have to worry about the downstream consequence to that. Um, leaky gut is never, ever the first thing that happens. Stuff has to happen to get leaky gut. It's not really a root cause per se. It's a downstream consequence. But it's also oftentimes not the last thing. If you have leaky gut for a while, you're probably going to get some autoimmunity. You're probably going to get some food sensitivities. You're probably going to get inflammation. So that's I think that's a really important thing to remember with leaky gut. In the integrative functional medicine world, we like to talk about leaky gut like it is a root cause, and it's really not. It's somewhere in the trunk of the tree of what we're looking at. Stuff had to happen to get leaky gut, but it didn't stop there. The train didn't stop there. Um, I hope you found this useful. The executive summary is leaky gut's out there. It's really, really common. But importantly, if you have leaky gut, you've got other stuff too. So you need to figure out why you got the leaky gut if you really want to treat it and heal it. I hope you found this beneficial and I will see you in the next video.